Hey everyone, happy Thanksgiving. First of all, it's Heidi Fang here and Vinny Bonsignor, our Raiders beat writer, and we're going to get you updated on all things happening with the Raiders after defensive coordinator Paul Gunther, offensive coordinator Greg Olson, and also Jonathan Abrams spoke today, so we'll get you updated on what they had to say. But as we know, Raiders heading into the Mercedes-Benz Stadium to face the three and seven Falcons, but Vinny, this game, as everyone keeps saying, it's getting easier down the stretch. This is a must-win situation for the Raiders to stay in that wild card mix, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and um, the, you know, obviously, when you're in a playoff chase, six games to go, almost every game is a must-win. Uh, but, but specifically, the ones that you're capable of winning or should win, those are like uh, almost you have to go, you have to win those games. You can't, you can't slip up against the inferior teams because you're going to play uh, the Colts, you're going to play the Dolphins, two teams that the Raiders are currently. Uh, in a playoff race with so um, you know you have in and around those two teams you have to take care of business and there's no question that the Falcons are better than their three and seven record you you have Matt Ryan and Julio Jones those are names to be reckoned with uh, the Raiders need to not focus on the record and look at the personnel and the players and how this team is playing recently uh, and that's all the motivation that they should need. Offensive coordinator Greg Olson spoke today, Vinny, about the Raiders going down there to play the Falcons and what he expects from a team that's now being coached by interim head coach Raheem Morris. There's some subtle changes that we've seen defensively. We've, you know, broke down their season, uh, the entire season. We've also just broke down the game since Raheem took over as the head coach. So we see subtle changes. Uh, as, there, as you would expect any time there's an interim head coach that takes over. What do you think is the main component here that the Raiders need to zero in on to be able to pull this off against the Falcons? Well, A, um, you know, you're almost going to have to brace for the fact that Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, a powerful offense uh, that's that's doing well statistically, you know, if not obviously in the win-loss record, uh, but they're capable of pushing you. They're capable of scoring points. Uh, and against the defense that, um, you know, we're still not quite sure who's going to be on the field for the Raiders come Sunday. Uh, you know, everything that they're going through with COVID-19 and getting players back, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you're going to have to brace for the fact if you're the Raiders offense that you're probably going to have to score another 30 points to put yourself in a good position to win. Um, so it's vital, obviously, for the defense to get some key stops. But more importantly, or just as importantly, you know, Derek Carr and that offense needs to be lights out again, uh, you know, going into Atlanta to make sure they leave Atlanta with the win. Yeah, Jonathan Abram actually spoke about what it was like going through the COVID protocol, not once, but a couple times here as the season has progressed. So it, he said getting ready is something that is challenging, to say the least, when you're going through that protocol and you can't be on the field with your teammates. So when you look at all of the different players right now that have had to go into that protocol list, there were still, as of Wednesday, five players that were still in that protocol that they got Littleton back. But how much do you think it would be key for them to be able to see each other on the field, obviously, before they head over to Atlanta? The Raiders have had difficulty this year defensively staying connected and playing as a team with chemistry and understanding of what everybody's doing and trusting each other. Um, a lot of that comes from what you do on the field. Uh, it, it's, it's one thing to do all the Zoom meetings. They're definitely doing that and to talk about it. You know, obviously you have to do that as well. Uh, but the next component is getting on the field and practicing it um, so that you can visually see it. You can you can hear it. You can see it. You can feel it uh, in, a, in an actual on the field experience. And the Raiders did not have that uh, the week leading up to the Kansas City Chiefs game. Jonathan Abram included as he was on uh, you know COVID-19 uh, protocol. And I'm not saying that that's the reason that, you know, uh, he made the error that he did uh, late in that game against the Chiefs um, led, leading to the game winning touchdown. But. You know, things like that, little things like that are, are indicative of a team that's not quite sure yet what everybody's doing or, or, or what, what everyone's supposed to be doing and uh, trusting each other that they are going to do that. Uh, Jonathan Abrams saw something that he thought that he needed to go address. Um, shouldn't have done it, but he did it. And as a result, it left Travis Kelsey wide open. So, you know, little things like that, absolutely, I think it has an effect. You have to have these guys get out on the practice field, but unfortunately... That hasn't always been the case. And on top of that, now they're meeting Zoom-wise. Uh, so you're not in a room together with your teammates to, to really dig into it and talk about it and ask follow-up questions and, and you know have those kind of conversations. On a Zoom meeting, it's just it doesn't have that feel to it. So something is definitely missing. And for a young team defense like the Raiders and also one that added a whole bunch of new players, it's, it's bound to have an effect. 
last thing here, Vinny, as we speak here on a Thursday afternoon, I just wanted to get any update from you if you have one on whether or not Arnett is back, if um, Amik Robertson's back, if LaMarcus Joyner's back. Yeah, we, uh, as far as all of that, it's, uh, you know, we still don't know. We weren't able to be at practice today. Um, so we're going to have to see what it says on the injury report uh, when, when that comes out. Uh, and, you know, I know that the, the Raiders are hoping to get Cleve Farrell back in the building today. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to play or that he practiced. We'll see. Um, but there, it, it's vital that all of those guys uh, get it, get, get back on the field uh, and as quickly as possible. It might not happen uh, in time for Sunday's game against Atlanta. But moving forward over this last month, month and a half, they absolutely need all hands on deck defensively. Great stuff, Vinny. Thank you so much for all those updates. And as Vinny said, we'll keep you updated. We'll get that stuff to you on VegasNation.com. Also, you can download the Vegas Nation app to keep up with everything that we are doing with covering your Raiders. Also, make sure to check out the Game Day Show, Cox View Channel 14 here in Las Vegas, every game day, 9 a.m. on Las Vegas time. Vinny Monsignor, I'm Heidi Fang. Thanks for watching.